Now, you're welcome to our geography one question per day. Today we'll be looking at rivers. Um, so, study figure 3.1 showing the drainage basin of the Feather River in the USA. Now, the Feather River is a tributary of the Sacramento River. So, what is meant by a tributary of Sacramento River? It means uh, a river that joins the Sacramento River because a tributary is a river, a smaller river joining the, uh, a larger one. So, this is the Feather River joining the Sacramento River. That's all. Now, what are the distance and compass direction along the Feather River from Oroville to Maryville? Um, Oroville to Maryville. So it's quite, you just look for those two points along the Feather River. Now, this is the Feather River here. This is the Feather River. Now, Oroville, this is Oroville, and this is Maryville. So all you need to do is you get your thread and you trace the two points then you use your scale here you use your scale here to now find the distance between those two points in kilometers that's it so your answer will be between 55 to 65 kilometers now what is the compass direction so looking for compass direction you just need to remember your cardinal point and and you see they said from Orovar. so you are start you are taking your reading from Orovar. So you draw your cardinal point here, which is never ever smoke weed. Uh, okay, sorry, never, not east, south, west. Eh? Never ever smoke weed. That's how we call it. So if you draw it straight, you find out that Maryville is south of Orova. That's it. So it's south. Now use an arrow and a letter to label each of the following on Figure three point one. Now the confluence of the Feather River and the Bear River. So this is the Feather River already. This is the Bear River. So confluence is where two river meet. So that's why we should use C. So this point here will be the confluence. You write your letter C. Then they say the source of the Bear River. The source of a river is where the river starts. So this is the Bear River. The source is where it starts. So that source, that should be source S. Now a lake with four rivers flowing into it. So I think this should be the answer here. This should be the lake with letter L here. There is four river flowing into it. We have the South Fork, we have the Middle Fork, we have the North Fork, and we have the West Branch of flowing into that river. So that's it. That's that. That's six marks. Now the next question here they said describe the likely changes to the characteristics of the river as it flows from x to y. Um, so if you look at this, the first thing you find out from x to y is that what is x and what is y. Now x is where the river start and y is moving downward. So you know your x to y you are looking at a river profile so x is like um the upland part and is flowing downwards down from the source and is moving towards the mouth so if it's moving from the source to the mouth what are the changes in characteristics so if you look at this now you are moving that means we are moving from upstream which is usually the source to downstream which is usually the mouth of a river so in that case um, in that case all you need to do is use this Bradshaw model you get your full answer so as you are moving from upstream to downstream the river discharge increases as you're moving from X to Y the discharge increases from X to Y the channel depth increases from X to Y the velocity the average velocity also increases from x to y the width of the river increases and the quantity of load increases however as you are also moving from upstream to downstream or from x to y which is the upstream to downstream the load particle size decreases it becomes more smooth the channel bed roughness decreases also and the gradient also decreases it moves from steep to a gentle slope then you can now mention some of the river features that are found within those regions so your answers can look like this 
first width increases depth increases cross-sectional area um, changes also um, wetted parameter increases wetted parameter is the part of the river that have contact with water then the volume or discharge increases the velocity increases the gradient decreases uh, it becomes less steep and the load number in the river increases the size of the particles decreases so that's it now at x which is the upper course you have things like rivers it, along the rivers you have things like waterfalls but at y you begin to have oxbow lake and uh, less erosion uh, takes place at y but you now have more deposition at y so that's it simple that's a river profile how you describe it now we have the b part of the question here and we have an insert and i've said it when, once you're given an insert one of the first thing you must do uh, when you have an insert you should try as much as you can to label all the part of the image now uh, first if you look at this i have vegetation here um, here i think that is a bridge um here you have this obviously is more like a port sorry support what is this um obviously this is a river um so these are buildings these are roads here you can see cars and roads along that area so if you have that that's that's it this photo interpretation now they said study figure 3.1 inserts a photograph of the river vlat which flows through prague um, and medc in europe now the river flow flood frequently describe three possible impact impact of flooding so if you've looked at that image uh, it's quite easy so if you look at this image there are things here buildings destroy road destroy ports destroy the bridge get destroyed so it's just simple you get your full mark so loss or damage of houses businesses affected which will lead to loss of income if houses are damaged you need to evacuate people and it can lead to homelessness uh, loss of historical buildings and which will definitely reduce tourists um, damage to public buildings um, things like schools hospitals will be go will, will, will be destroyed and damage to the bridge uh, and the ports cannot be used or it will be damaged uh, roads will be damaged and that can lead to spread of waterborne diseases that's all now this is suggest why flooding of the river vleta may occur suggest why now in questions like this you just need to describe the causes of flooding so that's what they are asking you what are the causes what are the causes that's 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 what they're asking you what are the causes of flooding Sorry, i didn't charge this what are the causes of flooding that's it so here are the causes of flooding that's what you just need to describe heavy and excessive rainfall causes flooding large area of flat land if it is found along the flood plains of a river uh, which that settlement is now rain for a long period of time uh, impact of saturated soil that's the soil is fully saturated with water so you expect that uh, any excess water will definitely flow on the surface uh, where you have snow glaciers ice melting uh, things like urbanization can because urbanization will lead to impermeable surface or concrete surface and as a result there will be less infiltration of water into the soil so most of the water will flow on the soil surface on the earth surface which can lead to flooding deforestation uh, cutting down of trees will reduce interception from rainfall and therefore causes flooding um, soil being washed into the river will lead to um, siltation of the river so the depth of the river will decrease therefore there will be excess water uh, once there is ha heavy flow uh, the water will over obviously flow over its bank and into the surrounding settlement um, insufficient investment in flood management such as there is no levees no dams to store water can actually lead to flooding and also dam busting 
is also a major cause of flooding. Now, they said, explain how, which is the C part. Here, there was no case study in this question. Uh, they said we should explain how an oxbow lake is formed. Uh, we should also include a diagram for it. So, simple, oxbow lake is usually formed from, a meanders, from meanders. So, now, if you look at this, erosion or hydraulic action or abrasion at the outer bend. Remember, in the formation of meanders, um, there is erosion in the outer bend at the position in the inner bend. So, um, for an oxbow lake to form, there is further erosion on the outer bend of a minder and also the position on the inner bend. And that will then make the neck of the um, meanders to become more narrow. And during course of rainfall or flooding, the neck can actually cut through and um, the position can occur at that point also at the outer bend. And once it cuts through, then and vegetation grow, it will now leave behind an oxbow lake. So we're talking about something like this. This is the diagram. You can use something like this. The first one here, uh, you can see um, lateral erosion taking place. So this is the outer bend here. And this part here is the inner uh, outer bend, outer bend. So here is the inner bend. So what you find out that the position is taking place in the inner bend. Why? erosion is taking place at the outer bend. So, uh, further erosion as it continues through uh, hydraulic action abrasion, this neck of the minder becomes very narrow, becomes narrow, your deposition is still taking place, it's pushing it towards itself. Now, the river will break through the narrow gap, uh, usually it occurs during period of flooding. So, once it breaks through, and um, further deposition occur, and um, vegetation, so it will not cut out this part, which is called an oxbow lake. So that is it for this um, day nine. So thank you.